Okay, so excuse the lighting. My um, office is in disarray because I am in the middle of shuffling things around, moving things around, reconfiguring how my workspace is, how my studio is, and uh, and yeah, it's it's a miracle that I actually have lights on at all. And so um, today I want to talk about something that has come up recently, and that is why I think it's really important for you to document and record your life. Um, and I think it's because it's because we have selective memory when it comes to how we recall certain events or how things used to be. Um, and this came up for me recently, right? Because I have had to, um, I'm on this journey of documenting this year so that I remember what happened and, and to see if I actually can change over the course of one year. But in my professional work, I, I'm a voiceover talent. And so I've been doing doing professional voice recordings for the better part of like seven or eight years now, full time. And over the course of those years, I've had a lot of great clients and a lot of repeat clients, and I do continual work for people all the time, right? Most of the time it's on new projects because I'll be working with some kind of production company and they continuously get new products, uh, new projects, and I continuously record new projects. But every so often there are certain projects where I have to go back and match record something. And this is where that idea of documenting your life comes into play because it's really the ultimate tool for you to see how you grow and develop as a person and individual. In my case, in, in this work example, um, I did, I don't, oh, so I'm not, I'm not going to tell you the client name, but I did a series, I've, I've, I'm basically the brand voice for a big museum here in the United States. And I have done everything from the phone systems. So if you call them looking for directions, you'll hear me. Uh, I've done their audio tour. So if you go to the facility and take the audio tour, you will hear me. I did their VR tour. I don't know if they still offer that, but they had a VR tour. I did the narration for that. If you go to the live events that they have, I do the Voice of God announcements. And so... So yeah, I guess I'm basically the brand voice for this museum. And they've been great clients. I've been working with them for years. They were one of like my early clients that I booked uh, like five or six years ago, maybe. And this week, they contact me and they say, oh, hey, we need to add a couple extra um, segments to our audio tour. Is that a, can you do that for us? And I'm like, yeah, no problem. And what I like to do is I go back and match record because I want to make sure that there's this continuity between them, right? And the issue for me is that when I go back and listen to things that I have done five years ago, never mind the fact my recording space and technique is a little different, my experience in doing the work was different my skill sets were different. My execution and performance was different. And I have a real <laughs> difficult time replicating things that I have done five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, even last year. Because we, you know, I'm continuously growing in my work and as a person. And the reason why I'm not telling you what museum it is, because I don't want you to go there and be like, oh my God, this sounds amazing. Because frankly, I think it sounds fine, but personally, because I'm such a perfectionist, there are things that I would change if I were to go back and, and to redo certain things, but there's no way that I can go back and just say, hey, I don't like my performance. Can I redo hours and hours and hours of audio for you for free? Um, but yeah, I... It's, it's the best way that I have discovered how I can really see how I've grown in my skill set, in my 
profession. And I think that that can hold true for a lot of things in our life. I think that when we get to a certain age, that we forget to do that, right? Um, If you look back, for example, on any of the artwork you or your children have done in preschool, kindergarten, first grade, elementary school, you can see how those skills have developed, right? That's like that big, that, that's like the, the most obvious way that we see growth and development. But at a certain point, the majority of us stop drawing like we did in kindergarten. So we don't see how we actually develop, right? And that's the whole point of it. I think in 2024 that regardless if you publish them on YouTube or not, making video journals chronicling how you feel to a camera because we all have access to them not only provides your family and friends and loved ones with a snapshot of who you were back then and what you were like and the things that you were going through, but also helps you as an individual have a accurate recollection of certain events as opposed to how we either catastrophize or we glorify things in our mind. Um, And yeah, it's a lot like Star Trek. And I'm not a Star Trek person. I'm more of a Star Wars person. But for this reference, Star Trek is like the captain's log, right? Captain's log, blah, 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 whatever. And they just tell it. But today we have the ability to do that for ourselves. And so I think keeping a video journal, documenting your life, documenting important events that isn't just you taking a video of your kids um, is really important. And I think that we won't see how important it is until a few more years down the line when this kind of generation of content creators is older and we see how important it was for them to create the content and make the videos they did when they were younger and what kind of impact it has on on them in the future. So that's that's my spiel for the day. If you have a camera and you're so inclined, go record yourself, even if just for yourself to watch in a week, a month, six months, a year later. Um, thanks for hanging out with me today, and we'll talk again tomorrow.